Hello and welcome to Talk of the Boat. I'm your host, Robert, with Team Yazbek at Coldwell Banker. Uh, today we have an Ask Me Anything episode with our very own Cole Helberg. Hello, everyone. Buyer specialist of Team Yazbek. Thanks for being here. Of course. Always fun. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions today. Cole's going to ask me questions that sellers have been asking us, and I'm going to ask questions of Cole that buyers have been asking. So uh, let's jump right in. You're, you're up. All right. Uh, so yeah, like Robert said, we have a bunch of questions from sellers. So the first one that we get a lot is uh, to you, Robert, how long are listings staying on the MLS right now? So great question, Cole. Um, believe it or not, the days on market right now is uh, a little bit less than it was this time last year, uh, which is a surprise to me, about 34 days on market. Cool. Average compared to 43 this time last year. Um, you know, but it really depends on the property, right? If it's, if it's priced right and it's compelling, uh, good location, you know, nicely updated and everything is going under contract, you know, within a few days still. Right. Um, but a lot of things are sitting on the market longer than expected right now. And, you know, it's, it's really tough to, to predict which, what, which why is which. Why do you which. think that is? Uh, you know, it's it's mainly price and demand, um, you know, sometimes exposure to the market, marketing, that yeah. kind of thing, you know, that definitely is a factor, but also, you know, updates, age of the home, condition of the home, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so how are interest rates affecting home buying? Uh, well, as everybody knows, uh, interest rates have gone up. Indeed. Indeed. No question. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, we were spoiled last couple of years with low interest rates. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that. So now interest rates are hovering um, in the, you know, high fours, mid fives right now up from last week. They actually dropped last week. So, yeah, um, but they're back up. Sorry, everybody. But uh, they are. So what that what that has done for a buyer is it's had them. Um, have to shop maybe in a little bit lower price point um, or put a little bit more money down, mm -hmm. you know, or reevaluate why they're buying and stuff like that and and go, maybe go from a single family home to a town home, uh, things like that. So mm -hmm. it's really just changed kind of uh, really the price point stuff that, that buyers are looking at. So, sure, sure. Um, and so and, have you seen people actually dropping out and get priced out because of the rates? I, well... Yes and no. Um, some people, yes, because they're mm. set on a single family home yeah. at a million two. Right. And this time last year, they could afford that. Mm -hmm. They didn't find the right house. And now they're shopping at 800000 yeah. or 900000 and they're just not finding what they want. So they've yeah. definitely just dropped out. Um, but we are, seeing, we are seeing some stuff, um, and you could attest to this, um, in, in offers, uh, buying rates down. So, yes. you know, definitely that is a newer thing to me. Mm -hmm. um, I've never seen that before because I was definitely in the, you know, the lower interest rate stuff. Yeah. Um, last year and the year before. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, with a really nice offer, you can ask maybe for a little help from the seller to mm -hmm. um, help buy your rate down or just buy your rate down yourself. Absolutely. You know, put a little bit less down, but put more into, you know, buying your rate down. So yeah. we're definitely seeing that. Perfect. Um, so, uh, as a seller, should I do work before putting my house on the market? Absolutely. Yeah, my, my question, my answer is always going to be yes to this. Uh, it's really important to have your property looking as good as possible before you put it on the market. You know, even with really low inventory, you know, there's, there's just always, um, there's always other options, right? And, and there's a, a much larger buyer pool of people that are looking for a property to be updated and, you know, clean and ready and, you know, no deferred maintenance and that kind of thing. So no question about it. Agreed. Definitely do work to the house. Yeah. And, you know, we've just seen four or five years of appreciation in two years, you know, so you've yeah. got the opportunity if you're selling right now to really cash out at a really good number. So yeah, the I money agree. you put in your house right now, you're still going to get out. I agree. And as a, and from the buyer side of that, mm -hmm. buyers are still paying more for done. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, if you have the bandwidth and the ability to do it, I agree with that. And it's sure. tough to do here. And it's one of the things we've set out to, to, you know, one of the problems we've set out to solve. We've got a, a good network of contractors and mm -hmm. subs and tradespeople now. So we can help you find the, you know, uh, the help, right? Yeah. And the contractors to do the work. And we can help you determine what needs to be done and what doesn't, you know? Because yeah. it's a slightly different list, right? If you're living in your house for the next five years than if you're about to sell your house. So right. we can help you determine that as well. 
for sure. Um, all right. So is there still a lot of competition for listings when they hit the market? Um, well, again, that depends. Uh, if the property is, you know, of course, updated and looking good uh, with doing all that work that you just did um, and price right. Mm -hmm. Price right now is huge. Um, again, we go back to last year and, and even up to the beginning of this year, you know, we looked <laughs> at stuff, um, something sold, the next one was 10% higher, mm -hmm. right? And then that sells, the next one is again, 10% higher. Yeah. Now, um, we're definitely seeing if something is priced right and the agent has taken the time to do the research and uh, a lot of put a lot of thought into the pricing and the pricing strategy, uh, it can definitely you know, get a lot of competition on it. Still seeing multiple offers on those really, really well-priced updated places, mm -hmm. but it's not 15 or 20 or 25 offers. You might see two or three, maybe four in some situations if the property is like dialed in. Right. So yes, there is competition, not as much. Right. So um, yeah. definitely be ready to, to jump on the, on those, you know, really nice properties. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. And, you know, you guys are still finding off-market properties for people, right? Totally. That's the way we solved that problem. Yep. And we've got that system, you know, tried and true at this point. So absolutely. if you don't want to deal with competitive uh, situations, you know, talk to Cole or one of our agents about off-market properties, which yeah. we learned about a lot and we connect buyers with quite a bit. Yep. Our off-market strategy is top-notch. And I think we, again, go back to last year, like 34% of our transactions last year happened off market because there was so much competition. So yeah. we were able to solve that pretty well. Um, and yeah, help a lot of people out last year. Absolutely. So, um, let's see. So Robert, as a seller, should I clean, organize, and put away all my stuff for photos and for showings and whatnot? Absolutely. Yeah, no, no question about it. Uh, the, the personal photo thing, you know, is I, I used to think it was kind of just a, uh, you know, staging gimmick or whatever, right? And maybe not that important, but you see it, right? The more you show property, the more you see people really do get lost looking at other people's personal photos, you know? And Absolutely. At the end of a long day, maybe the kids are crying and they're getting hungry and you're out trying to show one more house, you know, and the buyer's focused on, do they know the seller and do they, you know what I mean? Who's that in the picture there or right. whatever? And they're not really taking in the house and thinking about the views and the floor plan and that kind of thing. Right. So it's distracting too much personal stuff. Can I add something to this? Yeah. Um, what if my house is vacant? Should I stage it? That's okay. Yeah, you should definitely stage it. Yeah, we've talked okay. about that multiple times on this show. There's no question staging pays for itself and then some. Um, so yes, but in some cases, a clean vacant house is second best, right? To okay. a staged, beautifully staged house. Nice. That makes sense. So totally. if you're not going to stage it, having it totally empty and clean is probably next best. And then if you're going to go right. with your own decor and everything, we got to deppersonalize. Minimize. Minimize. Okay. We want there to so be space for the buyer to be able to Don't see mix and there. match couches and, you know, throw a random TV on the wall and yeah, stuff like that. Maybe exactly. Like that. No, no duct tape on the couch. Okay, perfect. And, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> that's easy. Yep, that's important. And nice. then cleaning's a big deal too, right? A lot of people just kind of underestimate, you know, you... You see your house every day if you're living there and what you think is clean is not the same as what somebody brand new to your home walking in for right. the first time thinks of as clean. Right. So, so we always nice encourage clean. Yeah, we and we encourage professional cleaning, right? Sure. We've got cleaners that we can recommend. So okay. you do the first clean, make sure it's looking yeah. really good, and then we'll have a cleaning crew come in and do a really deep clean that way. Okay. The buyers when they're opening the drawers and the cabinets and all that, they're not looking at your uh normal yeah. clean yeah, scum. Yeah, a little bit of leftover. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> dirt in the drawer. Exactly. For sure. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So um, let's see. Are sellers more willing to negotiate in your experience um, right now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, sellers are definitely um, getting a little more nervous, I feel like. So mm -hmm. when they're getting an offer, they're, they're not necessarily expecting the cash, quick close, no inspection, appraisal gap, all those things anymore. Um, now we're able to put back into those offers, the, you know, inspection objection stuff, mm -hmm. um, normal appraisal situations and stuff, right. uh, because things have slowed down yeah. and sellers want to sell their house. Um, it's still not, you know, you're, you're not going to get everything. Um, but you can still ask for those things. And again, one of those things we have seen, uh, be negotiated is like rate buy downs mm -hmm. instead of 
asking for money off the house, maybe say, here's a full price offer or maybe a little over asking yeah. and then asking for a little bit back as like a seller concession. That's a huge uh, thing we've seen to buy down the rate seller concession, yeah. 10 or 20 or $30,000, whatever it might may be to help with that. So that's another cool negotiation piece um, that sellers are definitely jumping all over. Mm -hmm. And then um, inspection stuff, we've been able to write those back into offers, which is great. Yeah. You can still get an inspection at your house, but maybe if there's you know a couple items on there that you just can't get over, yeah, you can ask for those things now, which is awesome. Yep. Um, you don't have to just go, all right, I'm buying the house and be all, you know, I'm buying it, no inspection. Right. That, that's always, that can bite you in the ass. Excuse my language, bite no you in question. the butt. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that can also um, end up being a bad situation. So now, if you want, you can ask for those things and it's great. So that leads me to my next question for you as yeah. a seller. Um, if there is inspection objection items, do I have to fix and repair all those things? Right. So that's a great question. As a seller, uh, you know, in the last couple of years during the, the COVID frenzy here, I was giving my sellers the, the, the same options, right? You can you can do nothing, you can do everything, or you can split the difference somewhere and, and negotiate right. based on the inspection objection. Mm -hmm. uh, but last couple of years, it was like, look, you don't have to do anything. As right. a seller, you could just say no, you know, and there are three buyers lined up behind that buyer. So since that isn't the case anymore, I'm definitely letting people know that it's uh, common courtesy to show a little bit of effort and some good faith. Sure. And maybe at least, you know, pick and choose some things that you will do. Yeah. Maybe, you know, offer a credit for yep. some of the items that you think are, are valid yeah. on the inspection objection list. We're still seeing a lot of uh, contractors being busy, so getting the work done might not always be easy, right? Right. So sellers are more likely to offer a credit. You know, they've got you know, two or three weeks often in that case before closing, yep. so they probably can't fix the windows and the doors and all right. the stuff that needs to be done. So most of them are offering credits unless they've got, you know, contractors in the family cool. or close by or something like that. But I don't see sellers doing the entire list yet. You know, we're, no, we're nowhere near that. Okay. They're just kind of showing some effort yeah. do a little bit, you know, maybe split the difference. And right. most buyers seem to think that's pretty reasonable in this market. Yeah. Well, it's definitely reasonable compared to last year Yeah. when it was like, no inspection. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. You can submit an inspection objection for fun and make you feel better, but yeah. no, most sellers were, were yeah. not really interested in, in playing the game at that point. Right. All right. So do you see home prices actually dropping? That is always the question. Um, I would say no. Yeah. They're not actually dropping. Right. They're just not appreciating as fast. Right. Last year to this year, I mean, what did we see? 25% increase from 2020 to 2021 to now 2022. Yeah. Things went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And now it's back to the, you know, three to five to maybe 8% this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't say they're dropping. They're just not accelerating as fast. And again, it goes back to the pricing strategy. You know, your agent better be on it, right? Because if he prices it too high, it might look like uh, the price is coming down but it's just being reduced back to where it should be. Right. You know, <laughs> instead of going here and now is leveling off here, my graph is leveling off to here, exactly. right? Yeah. So it's it's just not accelerating like it used to. Right. Um, but we are seeing lots of price reductions. We are seeing tons of price reductions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, you know, actually um, in the past seven days, more, ho uh, more homes have been decreased than have been put on the market. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah, I, I just noticed that this morning. Um, I think, call it 34, I think. And then the number of price reductions was 42 right. in the past seven days. So interesting. that's interesting. Yep. That just means to me, what that means is some agents are still thinking they can go, well, I'll just price it 10% higher than the last one. Right. And that's just not happening anymore. Yep. I think it just is, is leveling off. Yeah. Um, and being a little more realistic market. Sure. You know, you can't blame the sellers uh, for trying, trying. Though, right? You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Because we, we've seen it happening for so long. Yeah. And in certain sectors of the market, certain developments, like we said, something that's modern and, you know, yeah. updated and all that, they might still be able to do it. Oh, totally. Right? So there, you can't blame them for trying. But, yeah. Something like a, a really nice condo on the mountain that has great rental, you know, history mm -hmm. and things like in that. In the green zone. In the green zone. Yeah. And it's, priced just under 
market value. See you later. Going great. Multiple offers. Yeah. You know, going to go nuts. Absolutely. That's still happening. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're just seeing more of a normal, normal, in, you know, increase in price. Yeah. So, um, uh, okay. This is a funny one. Yeah. Can I be there during showings and inspections and walkthroughs as a seller? Right. Well, Mr. Seller, you can. It's your house, uh, <laughs> but we do not recommend it. It's, it's really not a good idea uh, for showings. Particularly, right, you want the buyer to be able to feel comfortable to talk to their agent about your property, right? right? Honestly, you don't want them to have to keep, you know, their mouth shut until they leave the showing right. to then talk about it, right? You want them okay. to spend as much time as they can, so you want them to feel comfortable. So not being there for showings is really important. Uh, inspections, you know, we don't recommend that either. Uh, the inspector usually doesn't uh, get a lot out of that. and. It's really hard to kind of, you know, keep your, your lips shut during the inspection yeah. as well. And oftentimes the buyer wants to be at the inspection. So it's basically like another showing. Right. So okay. giving them the, the space typically to speak with their inspector freely and everything is, okay. is key. And walk through, same thing, you know, um, that's more of a agent thing, you know, um, at that point. You're, you should be good to go. If you got something to be worried about, then, you know, maybe you'd be there and yeah. Distract, you know, or, something. Or, or at least clear it up, you know, like show them, oh, hey, yeah. we actually did do this work or something. Yeah, but it's a better job for your for your agent. Okay. You know what I mean? If there's something that needs to be explained at the walkthrough or whatever, have and you got a decent agent, have them do it. Okay. Have them show up and represent you. That's why you've solid. Them. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So what is the difference between a buyer's agent and a transaction broker? Um, well, good question, of course. Uh, Mr. Buyer, a as your buyer's agent, I can, uh, you know, negotiate and advocate for you and, and really, you know, put my feet in the grindstone when negotiating. Mm -hmm. And then as a transaction broker, uh, your once buyer's agent now becomes a neutral party. And we can consult and advise you and give you our past experiences on like, oh, hey, this happened when this happened last time, mm -hmm. you know, and give you all the tools you'll need without digging in and just kind of, you know, remain neutral um, because typically in that situation some agents do it you know regardless they just act as a transaction broker right i don't know why i wouldn't do that if unless we do it uh when we sell our own listings or something sure we act as a transaction mm -hmm. broker because mm -hmm. you know where we're also working with the seller and things like that but you know if we're working on an off off market property that happens or one of our own listings that happens but mm -hmm. if if i'm showing you property that another agent's listing we're, I, I want to work with you as your buyer's agent so I can really dig in and, and negotiate on your behalf. So Absolutely. those are the two differences there. Nice. For sure. All right. Love um, it. <clears throat> so will the market slowing down actually increase active inventory? Yeah. So this is a great question. I, I predicted there would be more properties hitting the market yeah. once people realize that prices were going to flatten a bit. We're in a shifting market. Rates are going up. You know, sales are definitely going down. Yeah, I thought we'd see more inventory at, at this point already, right? Yeah. But a lot of people are just staying put and don't know where to go. And because of, you know, the inventory issue, wherever they would move, right? They they don't feel confident in being able to cash out and find something. So as of now, we're about flat this time. Mm -hmm. You know, as we were last year, which is crazy because this time last year was you know record lows, basically nothing on the market. You know, yeah. So we're really in the same boat, um, yeah. pri you know, sales have slowed down. We've seen a little bit of, you know, inventory coming on um, that is led by the pricing and, sure. and just the market. I think last year, the, dude, the, it wasn't that there was no inventory. It was just selling too fast That's right. to be considered That's right. on the market. You're right. And there was a lot of off-market transactions happening. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, it looked like on paper, there was no inventory, right? Yeah. But no, was, you're absolutely it was right. just selling fast. That many more sales were happening because that many more off-market sales were happening. Right. More people are maybe coming to market now, but the active inventory, right. what you see on the MLS right now is about flat, um, you know, year okay. over year. So I don't think it's going to increase the active inventory because the main reason is they're not building new inventory fast enough, particularly in our market. I mean, even nationally, that's still not happening. Right. And there's, you know, huge developments being built all over the place, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Little old steamboat. Uh, there's a lot of high-end stuff being built, but there's hardly anything being built that's 
affordable and you know the brown ranch and some of the west end neighborhoods are years out still right, right. so we don't really see that you know coming into play for quite a while so yeah. unfortunately i don't think the inventory is going to increase anytime soon yeah but it may slightly it would take you know a lot of people putting their house on the market and a lot less sales happening for there to be any impact yeah for it to meaningful like be a neutral market or even shift a buyer's market yeah it would, it would have to be a lot of inventory we got a long way to go yeah, yeah supply and demand is is in full effect you know? yeah i would say so yeah but i would still say it's still a good time to buy oh god yeah you know um being that there's not a lot of not as much competition mm -hmm. and sellers are willing to negotiate i would still say even though supply and demand, you might have to compete here and there, but yeah. not like last year. Man, right. it's a breath of fresh air. Oh yeah, there's no question sure. about that. Yeah, so so there's definitely some relief for buyers, I guess, yeah. is what you're saying. And I totally agree with that. Mark and I were talking about it too. Some sellers, you know, either feel really fortunate that they made so much money in right. so little time, right, in their, their home's equity, that they're willing to kind of, you know, be a little reasonable, right. come down the price, whatever. And some sellers are, are nervous, right? I mean, totally. heading into a recession, is it a housing crisis and all yeah. that, right? We don't think it is, but there, there's a lot of sellers that are concerned yeah. about that, that they may actually lose all this equity, you know, that they just right. gained, right? Yeah. So there's deals out there for buyers. For sure. No question. Absolute deals to be had. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. All right, buddy. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us. I believe this was episode 28 of Talk of the Boat, Whoa. and we will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Talk of the Boat. Uh, if you enjoy this content, please subscribe on whatever uh, platform you're, you're viewing, like, and uh, share with somebody else you think might enjoy it. We'd really appreciate that. Also, if you have any real estate related questions that you'd like us to answer on the air, uh, please send those to us uh, by email, text, or direct message. And as always, if you have any real estate questions or needs that we can help you with, please reach out. Thank you.